This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this last Sunday in November and the last Sunday of the Christian year as we begin the Advent season next Sunday as we prepare our hearts for the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people to continue to pray for one another and lift up one another and make that difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning to continue to reach out to a community that's in need. We hear the cry of those around about us. We reach out to make that difference. We gather this morning as God's people to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Hymn number 128, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought.
This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we continue to lift up Miss Juanita Cooley, and we lift up Diane, and also uh, we want to remember Sh Sherry Jones. She had some surgery this week, and so we ask the Lord to be with each and every one of them and continue to walk with them day by day. We ask the Lord to continue to be with uh, those in Israel. We ask the Lord to continue to watch over them and be with them as they continue to swap hostages and those hostages get to come home to be with their family. We just ask the Lord to continue to watch over his people there. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace today, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have as your people to serve one another, to serve a community, to make a difference in the lives of all those around about us. Heavenly Father, continue to use each and every one of us as we make that difference. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your concern that you have for each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much that you were willing to send your son Jesus Christ to die on an old rugged cross that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have life and have it abundantly and have that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, it's because of your mercy and your grace that we have that opportunity. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who made it all possible as he offered up himself on Calvary's cross. Through his shed blood, we find eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that hope that he gives unto each and every one of us this day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that precious Holy Spirit that comes to live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts that guides us and directs us in all the ways that you would have us to go, that we might make that difference in the lives of those around about us. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are sick, those that are shut in, those who've been through surgery and those that are going through rehab, Lord. We ask that you continue to be with each and every one of them, watch over them in a mighty way and touch them and heal them. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. And Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, we just ask you to meet our needs today. And Heavenly Father, thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. We pray this morning as your children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 591, Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. <laughs>
Our psalm of reading is found on page 813 as we read from Psalm 93. The Lord reigns and is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed and is girded with strength. The Lord has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne has been established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the thunder of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. By way of announcements, today is the last day that we are taking up the quarters for the memorial home. Um, if you would like to go uh, to the memorial home with the choir, they will be going December the 9th at, at 10.30 in the morning. So keep that in mind. Uh, we are collecting the canned hams and we will be collecting them through December the 17th. I would like to see if we possibly could come up with 150. We had 71 the other week, and so if we can get about 80 more, then we'll have the 150. So uh, we trust the Lord that uh, you will come through and make that difference in the lives of those around about us. And next Sunday at... At 6 o'clock, we will have our Christmas program, so keep that in mind as we continue to worship the Lord as, you, as we bring our favorite finger food and dessert as we join together during this season of the year as we begin the season of Advent. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for every gift that's been given this day. And Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that continue to give to make that difference as we continue to reach out to the world and the community in which we live to make that difference in the lives of people. Heavenly Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology?
This morning we are closing out the 25th chapter of Matthew as we turn to verse number 31 as we read through the remainder of the chapter. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory and all the nations will be gathered before Him And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink I was a stranger and you invited me in I needed clothes and you clothed me I was sick and you looked after me I was in prison and you came to visit me Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needed clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hunger or thirst or a stranger and needed clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not, Do for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life into your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, anoint every word that is spoken and every word that is received. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject today is being a sheep may not be bad after all. In our scripture today, a lot of theologians say that this is the second coming of the Lord. The rapture has already taken place The tribulation has already taken place. And Christ has come the second time to set up his kingdom there in Jerusalem. And there he will judge the nations according to those that have followed the Antichrist and those who rejected the Antichrist. Those that followed after the Antichrist will be the goat nations and those who rejected the Antichrist will be the sheep nations. 
in order to understand that you would have to go to the book of Romans and you would have to go to the book of Thessalonians and you would have to go to the book of Revelation to put it all together. I don't disagree with them. I believe that it has to do possibly with the second coming and the possibilities of judging the nations. And there will be those people that will be saved during the tribulation, but it will be very few because of the circumstances that they are facing. Because first of all, you will have to take the mark of the beast. And the second thing is, if you know that you're a Christian, then you will be killed. So there are those things that are going against those that are left after the rapture as they go through the tribulation period. But this morning, as I look at that scripture, I look at it as Jesus is getting ready to go back to the Father. Jesus is getting ready to sit down at the table for the last time with his disciples there. He's having the, the last supper. And then he will go to a mock trial. And then he will be found guilty and he will be taken out to the hill called Golgotha. For there he will be raised up on the cross and where he will die. But Jesus is warning his disciples and the others to know what he expects of the people as he prepares to lay down his life for them. And so he begins the 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew with the, the parable of the ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish. Now, five of them was wise because they put oil in their lamp, but they also had extra oil because they did not know when the, the groom would come with the bride. And so they were ready and they were prepared so that when the, the word came out that the, bride, the groom and the bride was on their way, they were prepared to go out and to meet them. But then there was those five that were foolish that had oil in their lamp but they didn't have enough that they didn't bring any extra and because the groom was late in coming they were not prepared they were not ready and so they had to go out and look for oil and while they were going to buy oil the groom and the bride came and they went into the, the marriage feast and the five wise went in with them, but the five foolish was left outside. And, and what Jesus is saying to us in this parable is that we need to be ready and we need to be prepared because we do not know the hour that he's coming. And so we ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he rose the third day. We shall be saved. And we shall spend all of eternity with Jesus Christ. And so that's why he's telling us in that scripture to be prepared, to be ready, to make sure that we have the oil, the gift of salvation in each and every one of our lives. Salvation is by grace and not by works that any man should boast. But we should take that opportunity to accept that gift of salvation through God's grace. In the second parable in, that follows that in that 25th chapter is the owner is going on a long journey and he entrusts to him to his servants, one five talents, one two talents, and one one talent. 
and he goes on that journey. And while he's on that journey, the one with the five goes out and he makes five more. He takes that risk and he does whatever it takes in order to, to make another five. In the same way with the one that had the two, he went out and invested and, and did whatever it took to make two more talents. But the one that was given the one talent, he was afraid of the Lord. He didn't really care anything about the Lord. All he was, cared about was himself. And so what did he do? He, he went and he buried that talent in the ground. And so when the owner returned and asked for accountability, the first one said, I had five and now I have five more. And he says, enter into the kingdom. You have been over a few things. Now I will give you many things. And the same thing with the second one. When he came with his four talents, because he had earned two. But then when the one that came with the one, he had bared his talents. And the Lord took that and gave to the ones that had the others. But the Lord will judge us, not according to our salvation, because when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, our salvation is assured as long as we continue to do the will of God. But we will be judged according for our rewards. And it's according to the gifts and the opportunities that we have to do the Lord's work. We are saved by grace. But when Christ Jesus comes into our hearts and we become a brand new creature, then we won't to do those things that's pleasing to God. And so we reach out to the world around about us to make those opportunities to make a difference in the lives of people. In our story today, Jesus divides the nations. He divides the people in the nations. And there he puts the sheep on the right and the goats on the left as a shepherd would divide the sheep and the goats. And he says to the sheep nations and the people, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And they will say unto the Lord, Lord, when did we do those things unto you? When did we feed you? When did we clothe you? When did we give you drink? When did we visit you? And Jesus will say unto them, when you did it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. And then he will say to those on the left, the goat nations and the people who have rejected him, he will say, Depart from me, for I knew you not. I was hungry, and you did not feed me. I was thirsty, and you did not give me drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me in. I was naked, and you did not clothe me. I was sick, and you did not take care of me. 
I was in prison and you did not visit me. Lord, when do we not do those things? And Jesus would say, when you did it not unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. The Lord is saying to each and every one of us, we need to take a risk. We need to be willing to reach out to poor and the downtrodden. We need to reach out to those that are crying out to make that difference in their lives. I know it's easy for us sometimes to simply, you know, to give to the Salvation Army or give to St. Jude or, or give to the Children's Cancer Society or give to the Boys Town in different places because we feel like they are taking care of themselves, that they are, will take our money and they will use it wisely. But in my 40 years of ministry, I've dealt with alcoholics, I've dealt with drug addicts, I've dealt with people that were poor, I've dealt with people that was down on their luck. And sometimes, folks, we just simply have to take that risk. I know there are times in my 40 years of ministry that some of that money probably was used for alcohol. Some of it was probably used for drugs, and some of it was probably used for other things that, that they didn't say they needed the money for. But there are times, I believe, that we made a difference in the lives of people. And that's what Christ is calling us to do today as his sheep, as the sheep nation, to hear the cry of the poor and the lame and the blind and the needy and reach out to them and make that difference. Willing to take that risk. And sometimes we even need to, to take a greater risk in order that we might be the kind of sheep that the Lord would want us to be. Ken McCullen worked for McDonald's Corporation. And every few weeks, he would go as Ronald McDonald to the community hospitals in Southern California and Arizona. And he would go into those hospitals and he would visit with the sick children. And he would always have to take two representatives from McDonald's and the nurse would always have to be in the room. And you could not touch the, chi the, the child that was in the room. He knew that that there were certain things that he couldn't do. And so on this particular occasion, after being with them about four years, he was coming down to the hallway of the hospital as he was getting ready to leave. And there was a door that was open about halfway. And all of a sudden, he heard a weak voice say, Ronald, Ronald McDonald. And he pushed the door open and walked in and there was a little boy in his daddy's lap and there was the grandparents and the mother and the nurse and the little boy was hooked up to all kinds of different machines and he took time to p color a picture with the little boy and then he said he had to leave. And then the little boy looked up at him and said, would you hug me, Ronald? And he said, I, I got to go. And as he started to go, the little boy says, Ronald, will you hug me? And he knew that it was against the company policy. He knew that he could lose his job and he would probably lose the car and lose the home and put his family in dire straits. But something kept tugging at his heart. 
And so he asked the parents and the grandparents to step out. And he asked the two workers that came with him to go down to the van. And he had the nurse to stand over in the corner. And he held the little boy and Billy would ask him, what's going to happen to my younger brother when he starts kindergarten next year when I won't be able to show him the way? And he assured him that his younger brother would be taken care of. He said, what about my dog? I hid the bones, a box of bones, and I don't remember where I hid them. Will my dog be taken care of? And he assured him that the dog would be taken care of. And for 45 minutes, he answered all of the questions that the little boy had. And then as he prepared to leave, he gave the parents his real name and his phone number, which was another way of getting fired. But two days later, they called him and said Billy had passed away. But he said, we really want to appreciate you for what you did for him. Because when we went back in the room, he said, I don't have to wait till Santa comes because I've been hugged by Ronald McDonald. Folks, on this last Sunday of the Christian year, the Lord is calling us to be the sheep of his people, to take that risk, to be willing to do whatever it takes to make that difference in the lives of those around about us. The Lord cared for the poor and the needy. He's calling on us to take that risk this morning. For he said, as you have done it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. Hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Heavenly Father, help us this day to be the best sheep that we possibly can be as we make a difference in the lives of those around about us. Heavenly Father, help us to be able to take those risks. Heavenly Father, that we might make that difference. Heavenly Father, may your spirit guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.